Hello there, I'm Velocity, I'm one of the developers of Divine RPG, and sometimes in my free time I also play on this private server uh, with my mod pack called uh, Divine Technology Pack version Techno, and it also has Divine RPG on it of course. And the reason I'm recording is because I uh, wanted to create a better Skulk Shrieker farm in this server. Uh, because Skulk Shriekers uh, are used in a very special recipe to create soul traps. And soul traps are very very useful for creating all kinds of mob spawning based farms because a soul trap um, disables all spawns in stack. and that's and with these blocks it's super easy to spawn uh, spawn proof gigantic areas and increase the output of farms dramatically and um, I already have a tiny faker farm um, it's it's very simple. I basically uh, found a place where I have uh, three zombie spawners right underneath my base. That was a very lucky find. Uh, the server started on a random seed. So there's one spawner there, one up there and one back down there. And with the minecart I can just travel between all three of them and do the zombie spawns. And these zombies uh, then get pushed into this place where they die on spike blocks so spike blocks <laughs> freak they're making sounds um, spike blocks they're made out of five iron and they're very very useful especially for farms because everything that stands on top of it gets damaged uh, I'm going to collect that because I need that also going to collect these and basically uh, the death of um, these zombies fuels the catalysts and the catalysts then spawn a freaker or sensor on the skulk here um, but this farm is obviously very very slow because it's just uh, spawners in a small area where the shriekers can spawn and I just thought I could use Eden as a dimension where there's a lot of voids so I don't have to spawn proof a lot of places. Um, I could use uh, naturally spawning mobs in Eden to uh, create a way more efficient and way faster shrieker farm. And basically what I'm going to do is I, I gathered already all the materials I need to build the farm. Just let me put on my invisibility cape. Um, and the farm is back there. So the farm is right here. And I'm going to show the design I made. So it's, it's a very simple design. It's pretty easy to build. There are a few expensive pieces there, uh, but not too many. And also, it, this is the first time I really worked with the create mod, which is kind of funny, oh, I missed it. And so I'm, I'm fairly certain there are hundreds of better ways to do a freaker farm than design, the design I came up with. Uh, but I'm just going to roll with the thing. So, in this small asteroid here, I have a soul, um, soul, what was it called? Soul trap, right? Um, which spawn proofs uh, this chunk, so nothing is spawning here. And here I already have an, a regular Eden mob farm. So, how this works is it's basically just a dark room full with spike blocks and hopper minecarts uh, going beneath it and collecting all the items here and then i just have an afk spot here back here uh, from which i just collect all the items 
And what I'm going to do now is there's a lot of space here. I am just going to build next to this farm. I'm also going to build my Freaker farm. So let's begin. I will put the uh, I'll put the shulkers here. Also, I have an ender chest. I don't know why it's invisible. That's a weird rendering bug, but it is indeed an ender chest. And these are the remaining materials I need to build. So, first thing, I'm going to decide where exactly I want the main spawning area for the mobs to be. So basically how this farm works, it has these mechanical pistons and I'm going to fill out one entire chunk with one layer of skulk blocks on which the mobs can spawn and I'm going to use these mechanical pistons to then push the mobs uh, into a kill chamber where also the skulk catalysts are situated and that's basically it, like <laughs> there's not much else to it. It's just some timing circuits and tunnels and mechanical belts to transport the items and sort them. But the basics are just a mechanical piston pushing the things into the chamber and a lot of deployers uh, to collect the shriekers and sensors. So, okay, let me just quickly build a platform. So, this is the platform. While I'm building, I put a temporary salt trap here to prevent mob spawns in the area I'm building. Because the Eden mobs do like to spawn even at um, light level 15. And the main thing to know about this area is um, that it uh, you want to build it below the Y value of 128 because quarries spawn only above that Y level and you definitely want it below that because the farm design is uh, totally not it's, it's not at all um, quarry proof so if if quarries spawn in your farm, you're just going to end up with a gigantic, uh, how do you call it, flock, or I don't know, swarm of quarries, which will <laughs> for sure ensure, ensure some chaos. Um, but yeah, um, so this is just a 16 by 16 skulk platform. And I also created on one side a ledge uh, because here, down here, I will place a lot of salt spike blocks like this. Um, and this is the area where the mobs uh, that spawn, oops, the mobs that spawn on top of the um, skulk get pushed down here and the death gets detected by these two skulk catalysts which then turn the experience into a skulk power, I don't know what it is and creates the sensors and shriekers here okay but for that I need a few more spike blocks Okay, so this is the area, so this is the main area completed now. Of course, when I'm back there, the mobs can't spawn on these blocks. So some of them already triggered the skulk creation. Uh, there, it's not a problem at all that there are skulk veins on here. It's actually a good thing. And of course, the mobs can spawn here because this is not spawn proofed. I only spawn proof this chunk. And now, um, around that, actually, first thing I'm going to place, 
are the mechanical pistons. So for the mechanical pistons you are going to need a lot of extension poles. I'm sure there's a way more efficient way um, to set these up. Uh, to maybe just use one mechanical piston or some, something in that way, fashion. Uh, the reason why I did not um, the reason why I did not uh, do a big contraption that just is 16 blocks wide and pushes things is because um, so my first design had that um, but then I ran into the problem that uh, sensors would spawn so when the pushing thing is here on the latch sensors could spawn behind the pushing thing and the pushing thing would just block and not retract fully and just um, get clogged basically and but with this design I see that um, the shriekers don't spawn behind the mechanical piston head and ev so everything gets pushed nicely onto here Um, of course, the mechanical piston needs to be long enough to push to the full extent. So, I need a lot of extension poles here. I try to not lose them in the void. And a good way to see how, if you place the right amount, is to just hold down here, right click, it will go to here, and then just add one more extension pole outside in the next chunk because you need 16 of those to uh, push the entire level. Of course mobs are spawning here so the farm is actually already working so actually all you need is this here but um, of course I'm going to make it quicker and more efficient and automated. Uh, the main part here is automated because in the old farm I had to manually destroy all the shriekers, which was just tedious because there's always the risk you break the floor and things like that. So it's way more comfortable to just have it all automated. But there's one problem, one big problem with uh, the automation part is what exactly are you going to use to collect the shriekers uh, because they actually if you break it normally it drops xp it does not drop the block itself you need a silk touch hole to um, collect the blocks um, and that's why the deployers which are going to be on this side, so basically the pistons not only push the mobs, but also push, push the shriekers and sensors, which, uh, which, will which will just float up here. And then the pliers that are facing from here will just collect the, these. And that's how I collect the blocks. And for the deployers, I just made a ton of bedrock hole holes with all silk touch enchantment. So for this is the most expensive part of the entire farm because one bedrock hole consists of two bedrock chunks and uh, three bedrock chunks are crafted with seven obsidian and nine rupee ingots. So basically uh, 16 times 2 is 32, I rounded up to be divided by 3 it's 33, divided by 3 is 11. So you need 11 rupee blocks, this means 99 rupee ingots, and 77 um, obsidian blocks, which is pretty expensive. I mean the obsidian part is pretty cheap, it's easy to get obsidian, but the rupee you either need an existing uh, deep slate mob farm or a dark room or just fortune pickaxe and Terran equipment and mine a lot because it's pretty not that easy to get that many wait how did those guys oh they spawned here see this is outside the chunk and they can spawn on the mechanical pistons 
<laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> the Kadillion just walking on the few pole sticks here. I'm just going to kill that quickly. Yeah, so I, I'm just going to place some slabs on this. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about these spawns anymore. And yeah, enough talking for now. I'm going to finish this and then see what I can say next. So, the main pushers are in place, but what I also need is one more sticky mechanical piston. Because um, the way I made the contraption to um, know when it's fully extended and when it's retracted, I designed a very lazy method to make a timing circuit. I just need one more shaft. Where are my shafts? Where did I put my shafts? I need my... Ah, there they are. Okay. Uh, so the lazy method is to have uh, yet another um, mechanical piston which is sticky right here and with the same length which then gets one block here two slabs here and a redstone block right here oh did I forget to make maybe I forgot to make some parts because yeah I forgot to make some gear shifts uh, so basically ugh, I have to create craft a lot of things now again <laughs> I, I was kind of um, just looking thinking about what I need for the contraption, not really having a list written down or anything, so I didn't really know if I had all the materials or not, just winged it, but um, it won't be too hard to make some gear shifts. But basically I have a power toggle latch here, which will control a gear shift, um, and every time this block, so this, these four blocks are a contraption, which is going to be pushed by this mechanical piston. And where's my... I'm, I'm kind of a mess right now with the items. And I have a line of redstone here, which goes to this block. So when this contraption is activated, this redstone own block will not output a signal onto this line until it reaches the limit and this turns back into blocks and then it sends here a signal of course we need a repeater in the middle because the line is too long otherwise so let's place that down I have those here let's get one of those here and when the redstone block reaches the end, it sends a signal back, which then toggles the power latch, which will change the um, which will change the gear shift direction, and it will rotate in the other direction and pull all the blocks back. So every time these reach, because they get rotated at the same speed, the movement is the same speed. It will reach the end at the same time, and then stop, and then go back, and then when it stops, it sends another signal, changes the gear shift, and that way I make the sweeping thingy work. Um, of course, uh, what I also am going to do is encase this whole thing with a uh, wall block, so I'm going to use deep slate, uh, cobbled deep slate walls and uh, that way no mobs fall off the edges because you don't want to lose mobs in weird ways and it's best to have all the mobs in here so 
Um, also, mobs sometimes do jump on the edges of the pistons. Uh, what, um, which is actually not a problem, but the only problem is they made them jump over the ledge here. So this is also going to be a higher wall on all sides. So the mobs cannot jump out of the contraption. Uh, and if they land on top of the piston thingies, when it fully retracts, they fall back down here and then get pushed, so it's not a problem. So all the mobs that spawn also get killed. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of mobs spawned already. I could pick up those items, especially the gold. I need the gold for a building project I'm making. Um... And yeah, let me get, let me craft a few gear shifts I forgot, and also bring the cobble deep slate walls, so see you in a bit. Okay, so a day passed since the last clip, because I had to go and do something else. But in the meantime, I encased the whole thing with uh, the cobble deep slit wall and also put a roof. So there's a bit of a dark spot in the middle, so some dark mobs can also spawn. And uh, now, I'm just going to continue. Main thing I uh, did here is I did not want to touch the skulk with the deep slit wall. I know that the skull Skulk power does not translate onto blocks like these, but I still do it because I don't know. It's just a bit more comfortable that way. Oh, I'm, uh, I think I know why. Because uh, when I place a wall, it makes a hitbox so a mob is kind of standing on the ledge. And then if they fall here, especially, they could stand on the ledge and not get damaged, which I don't want to happen. So for the deployers, I need all 16 of them and I just realized I don't have a wrench. Oh yeah, also I crafted the gear shifts. Here they are. So I have those. I need gold sheets, cogwheel and a stick. Okay, that's cheap. Uh, just a sec. So for the deployers, you want to have them here. This way, like this. And those are also going to be part of the contraption. Uh, why is this so? Because um, I just think it's way more efficient to collect items that way. So this contraption is going to be very simple. It's uh, just going to move from this block to this block and then back again. And that's the whole movement because the deployers always break blocks two in front of them. So they break everything in this row and everything in this row. And that's all I need. The main thing here is you need to right click all of the deployers with the wrench to toggle uh, them into punch mode or destructive mode. And then, of course, give them the better holes. There we go. Now all of them get better holes. Why better hole exactly? Because better holes have infinite durability, and that's very useful to have in farms. Um, because then you never need to exchange the item. You can just have it indefinitely working. Like so. So these four blocks get connected. Like this. And then of course all of this. But I'm going to finish the full contraption before I move it. So this here of course also needs one of these moving parts. So I'm going to put uh, the last mechanical piston of the entire contraption uh, back there. Have a gear shift, control it, power toggle ledge, redstone repeated for good measures, and the redstone. Is 
first the redstone. Where, 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 where did I put the redstone? It's here. Yeah, here it is. So, of course, I'm going to also install a collecting system for items down here. Uh, so I can also collect the byproducts. Okay. I need a piston like this. And then the gear shift controlling it like this. So this is how this works. I put the block down here and connected it up with the redstone in the same fashion with this. M the most important thing is that the start and the end block are connected with this here. And uh, here I have the portable storage interfaces. Of course the contraption needs a... no, that's not what I wanted. The contraption needs a chest to store the items. And it will just transfer them here and then into this chest. And from this chest I can then transport it wherever I want. Actually no, why? Why do I do this? I don't need that. I actually only need a brass funnel and some mechanical belts. And connect this thing directly to the output. I don't need this part. <laughs> I'm kind of refining design as I'm building it. Because why not? It's way more efficient to do things on the fly. So I just have the shaft here. And then I can connect a mechanical belt to wherever I want. And that's where I output my items. Perfect. Now I'm just going to build the excess item collection part right here. Which is just going to be a hopper minecart spinning about. Because I think that's pretty sufficient. This is now passively collecting already. Now let's connect up these two. Okay, but that is working and I'm going to set the stack size here to 64 because that's more efficient. And then I... Oh, I might as well just connect it like this. And then I also need one contraption that goes this way. So the items just pile up here and then get sorted later. And this is... The main part of all of it is done. And now I just... Actually, the farm is completed. I just need to connect up all the different moving parts with uh, shafts and create the power source and that's it so this is the entire farm completed all I did is connect um, all of the rot rotating things to a giant water wheel um, I also did <laughs> a bit of fiddling with gear shifting so the thing rotates a bit faster by just passing on the rotation of the bigger wheel to the slower wheel uh, so this rotates I think twice as fast I'm not sure how the proportions are can create um, but yeah so this thing is swiping Yeah. 
that. And everything is gets transported over to the place I'm standing in. And uh, just get sorted here. So I have a filter for meat, souls, gold, sensors, and lastly shriekers. And some of those went through, I don't know why. But mainly the farm already produced three shriekers while, while I was building it. And there's probably more coming soon. So, yeah. That's it. Um, I will probably, when I have another more interesting project I'm working on, I might share it. I don't know. Yeah. Bye.